Well, there we go. That's a little bit better. I don't look so terrible. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to yet another edition of Plus and Minus. This, of course, if you did not see it, the debut video, go back and watch it. I, Plus and Minus, Epcot. And I'm going to be plusing and minusing different parks throughout the duration of this. Maybe getting rid of one of your favorite attractions, one of your least favorite attractions, and bringing some of your favorite attractions from different parks around the country, and some new concepts that I have personally. Now today we are going to Universal Studios Florida, a park that I have become very uh, familiar with. I am now an AP at uh, Universal and loving every second of it to be totally honest. I very much enjoy the parks and uh, there's a lot of things I would like to do to plus and minus the parks. Now I'm going to bring up a map here. Of course you can't see this because obviously you're not paying attention to my computer screen because you can't see nothing but my face. Um. We will start off with the front of the park. Um, I'm going to go left to right. Start with Rocket. River Ride Rocket's amazing. I would find a way to add more music. Definitely uh, find a way to add more music. More songs. More hidden music would be nice. Um, more music that fits Halloween Horror Nights is cool. I like the way they do that with Rock the Universe. More uh, Halloween themed, more horror themed music for Horror Nights that you can access anytime, not just during Horror Nights. And the Rock the Universe music, I think you can access it anytime as well. So that would be cool. And uh, find a way to fix the maintenance issue that keeps it down all the time. That would be really good. I really like Rip Red Rocket. It's an awesome ride. I enjoy the music. And uh, the secret tracks that everyone knows about. Because there was another way to get to them that would make them foolproof. I was trying to uh, access Rainbow Connection because I really wanted to ride to Rainbow Connection in September last year. And uh, it didn't go through. So I got Crystal Method, Polyfuse Method, with of course, as we well know, is the song that is picked for you automatically if yours doesn't go through or if you don't choose it fast enough. So add more music to Rip Ride Rocket. That's cool. No problem with that. Let's look at, uh, we're still in Production Central, Shrek 4D, maybe update the video a bit, um, I like it overall, and I think there's room for it, but maybe update it a little bit, maybe, I don't know if it's digital or not, if it is, then, uh, clean it up a bit, possibly, add maybe some new effects, make it a little different, the Donkey Live, a meet and greet that they're working on right now. I think it's going to be really good, honestly. While we're talking about DreamWorks, um, there's a water coaster that Universal has in another park. I re don't recall if it's Japan or Singapore, but it's themed towards Madagascar. And Universal Studios does not have an, op an option to get you wet. And given the fact that sometimes heat can be unbearable, there's a whole section called Toon Lagoon in Islands of Adventure that gets you absolutely drenched. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, sorry, still have that weird cough. Anyway, it kind of hurts to laugh sometimes. It's very strange. But anyway, I do want to say that the Madagascar water coaster should come universal. I don't have a problem with it. The only place you really can get wet is uh, Kids Inn, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. New York is fine. Twister's okay. I don't mind Twister at all. Um, you could get rid of it and do something else with it, but it's purposed pretty well for HHN, so uh, don't. The Mummy's phenomenal. I like it the way it is. I don't think there's really anything you can do with it. Keep the Blues Brothers, because they're amazing, and the guys that do the Blues Brothers, awesome. Maybe f focus more on them. Like It's a street show. Maybe build them a little stage, possibly, and I don't mean just the steps. I mean build them a nice little stage so they can uh, do their show in a better environment. I guess it fits the mantra. I don't have a problem with the, the restaurants. We'll keep them as is. Let's go to San Francisco. Disaster stays as is. Uh, it's grown on me. Beetlejuice Graveyard Review. You know, honestly, it might be time to uh, put the kibosh on it. Unless you know they're working on the new Beetlejuice movie, and I know they are, so maybe do something with that area. A new show of some sort. 
I know it goes over very well during Halloween Horror Night, so maybe, uh, maybe start advertising for magicians. Maybe a variety show of some sort. Or, I mean, just if you want to keep it as, that is, as is, maybe add more characters to it. I mean, most of the kids that come to Universal that I've seen don't have any idea who Beetlejuice is. They really don't even know the Universal Monsters. So, uh, some more awareness would be nice. Maybe bring Beetlejuice out in the park, let him meet people and freak them out. It'd be funny and entertaining. So, uh, that's what you can do with the Graveyard Review. World Expo is fine because Men in Black is amazing. I love it very much. Simpsons is going to be great once the area is absolutely constructed. Because we have way too many construction walls at Universal right now. It's pretty bad. I mean, Halloween Horror Nights last year, trying to get around, not working. But uh, we'll get to that later. Yeah, apparently someone's calling. So, uh, but it doesn't matter because I don't answer this phone, so there. But, um... Food and Film Festival just got shut down, of course, repurposing it towards basically a Simpsons food court. I don't know, Krusty Burger I'm hearing is coming in. There's going to be a version of Moe's Tavern. So, hopefully, another new on non-alcoholic beverage is coming in that Simpsons area. I know a lot of people would like to drink Duff. I personally am a FUD fan myself, because I thought FUD Man was one of the funniest things. And it was an inside joke with me and my friends for a long time. Of course, there's Duff Man, of course, in Shelbyville, if there's FUD. So, FUD Man and Duff Man had a fight. It'd be interesting. Um, and D Duff Man costume character would be interesting to see if they could pull that one off. That'd be interesting. Work really well for the Simpsons area. I think a Simpsons food court is very much needed. The, um, the aliens, the, the flat ride they're talking about, that's fine. Maybe bringing a couple more rides into the area. Just a couple flat rides here and there. Nothing major, because you have the Simpsons ride as ginormous right behind it, so I think it fits pretty well. Um, we're going to talk about Kid Zone a bit. I really don't do much at Kid Zone, and the only thing I've really used it for is go to E.T. and, um, of course, the backdoor to House of Horrors for HHN last year. Kid Zone, um, there's ways to do it, and uh, I don't think it's working. Maybe not time to completely take it out, but repurpose it a bit. Now, I know everybody was really agitated when uh, Jaws shut down, and so was I, honestly. Didn't get a last chance to ride Jaws, but that's another story altogether. And Confrontation was really amazing, and uh, I like what re replaced these rides. In Jaws' case, uh, not really what was replaced the rides. I will like when it replaced the rides, because the... The London area of Harry Potter, of course, including the Hogwarts Express, which is coming in, which is one of the worst kept secrets of Universal right now. Hasn't been even mentioned yet. That and the Gringotts Bank Coaster, but I'll talk about that when we get to Islands video in a couple weeks. Um, I'm going to a different park next week. I haven't quite decided which one yet. I'll probably figure it out by the end of the video. But uh, the Animal Actors Studio, I think it's time to get rid of it. It's It's a big piece of land. And you know... I don't know what we would call it. Maybe like Nostalgia Land or something like that. That's way too Disney though. I don't think Universal will go there. But a nostalgia themed area of the park where old school characters roam around and old rides come back. Like a version of Jaws would be nice. I think it would fit well with a repurposed backlot tour. So Jaws and Confrontation can come back. You can also rebuild the Psycho House and do some Alfred Hitchcock themed attraction there. And that would work really well as a tie in for Halloween Horror Nights. Because I know a lot of people really want to see Hitchcock brought into Halloween Horror Nights. And the Lagoon Show is a start. And it is a start. But I really think there's much more you can do. With Hitchcock, the movie coming out this past year, which is excellent. I know it wouldn't have anything to do with it, but. It brings people back to Alfred Hitchcock and who he was as a person and the amazing and intense films he made. And I think out the Hitchcock experience would be nice. Maybe the art of making movies bring that back a little too much like um, Horror Makeup Show and Murder, She Wrote mixed together. But there's got to be something you can do with it, so uh, do it. Make it happen. 
So like I said, a new repurposed backlot tour. Kind of like the backlot tour we have at Disney. Maybe change it around a bit so it's not really ripping it off. Take the good parts from Hollywood and put them together. Obviously we're not using Earthquake because Disaster already takes care of that. But of course there's room for Jaws, there's room for Confrontation. And a couple of the attractions in the past. Another thing I would like to do, I would like to bring back Back to the Future. Now, make it a little bit less bumpy. That's what I would do with the Animal Actors Studio location. I would retheme it and bring back Back to the Future. But again, this Yesterland, this old-timey area for Universal, former Universal attractions, may not get over so well with everyone. It'll get over with the diehards. They'll probably be back there in droves. But we've got the Simpsons right next to it, so that's fine. The Simpsons area will be okay. And the Madagascar water coaster, somewhere, somewhere in uh, Production Central. I guess we'll figure that out later on. Um, Transformers, it's coming in. It's going to be fine. I hear the Monsters Cafe is not going to be rethemed. So that's good for the people who like the Monsters Cafe, which I went to for the absolute first time in September. I've never been in there before. I just went in the bathrooms. I actually just want to check it out. Look around. Interesting place. Um, it's kind of like sci-fi, but you're not sitting in vehicles to watch the movies. And it's themed towards like a, a laboratory. And it's really cavernous when there's no one there. So, that was fine. Um, I do know that Energon, or Energon, however you want to pronounce it, is coming to uh, Universal Orlando, so I get my wish. My frozen orange drink is coming, and that makes me very happy. Now, they're not turning Monsters Cafe, of course, into Starbot, like it did in Singapore. No, um, Singapore and Hollywood. They are just bringing in Energon and probably the Chocolate Cube. To be sold at Monsters Cafe somewhere in the corner somewhere. Maybe like a little Transformers corner. That's fine. It's kind of like how we were really agitated when we found out the Main Street Bakery was going to become a ginormous Starbucks. And they thought about it and they realized, yeah, that's not a good idea. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to bring Starbucks in there. Like they're going to bring the Transformers beverages and food into the Monsters Cafe. And I got no problem with that. The fact that Transformers is very much like Spider-Man is fine because they're two separate parks. I mean, granted, there's City Walk in between them and you can go to either one. But Transformers is going to be huge this spring and uh, it's going to be awesome. I have no problem with the entertainment. The Superstar Parade's great. I like the Macy's Parade. And uh, Cinematic Spectacular is phenomenal. I love it. I really wish there was more lo viewing locations. The uh, video I had, which apparently for some reason is the top viewed video on my YouTube channel. Thank you guys. I do want to thank you guys for that, especially. I uh, think it's amazing. It's kind of like, I mean, it's very Illuminations-ish, very World of Color-ish. But I like using movies as the background, and that's pretty cool. I very much enjoy it. It kind of reminds me of the old SeaWorld, the Atlanta Stadium SeaWorld water ski, like, laser light shows that I remember watching back when I was a kid in Orlando and Ohio so uh, that was cool Hollywood um, there's ways to do things here and the makeup show is iconic and it fits really well with HHN keep it it's great Terminator 2 it may be time to finally get rid of it I'm not exactly sure what you bring there but I know that Universal is talking to the Tolkien's like I was saying in a previous video so maybe Lord of the Rings would fit Islands better, even though it's a lot of overkill when it comes to books, with Potter and Lord of the Rings both being there, and of course, theming the lighthouse to the Eye of Sauron, which I'll talk about that later. But there's got to be something you can do with the Terminator building. I mean, a show for Halloween Horror Nights is something great. I personally want Rocky Horror back, because I like Rocky Horror and I didn't get a chance to do it when I went to Halloween Horror Nights. So you got Bill and Ted, you have Rocky Horror. And uh, that's what we use Fear Factor for, so we don't really get rid of it, we just repurpose it. You know, if you want to just tie in some things, you bring back another show of some sort. And I don't know exactly what you want to do with that show, but uh, something does come to mind. There is a universal property that's not used. The Wild 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 West show 
the stunt show was, I enjoyed it very much. Of course, it reminded me a lot of Indiana Jones, but it had a Western theme. But, um, it worked really well. And I know the Batman stunt shows at Six Flags work really well. How about Jason Bourne? How about we use the Bourne series of books and movies and we create a Bourne stunt show? Universal does own the property, so it will work really well. That's how we use the Fear Factor Live stadium. That means it doesn't sit dormant, so Bill and Ted does not the only thing that's there. So that I think that works pretty well. Um, wow, I'm starting to get hungry. Um, Halloween Horror Nights, bring back Penn and Teller, obviously, because I want another shot at this. And, uh, but of, I'll get to that video in the next week or so. I'm pretty sure I'm going to shoot that video. I proved with my, uh, video about the Academy Awards nomination reactions that I can keep my voice low and not curse. So I think the HHN video is coming soon. I just got to get out all the story together in my head so I can uh, break it down for everyone. I don't have a problem with anything. Maybe a couple more quick services. Maybe uh, get some more sous chefs that actually know what they're doing. Because honestly, the universal food as a whole is absolutely horrible. Maybe find the people from CityWalk and talk to them about it. And... Uh, bring that in, bring that aspect in, a new, some more table service. I'm not exactly sure what you'd theme it towards, but a new table service would be nice. A couple more counter services, so there's more options to eat, and not just the food tents at Halloween Horror Nights, so the, get on that, that'd be awesome. Because Mel's is pretty much, Mel's and Finnegan's, Richter's, Lombard's, pretty much your only options. Bring a restaurant of some sort into, uh, San Francisco. And if you don't want to bring Jaws back, how about a Jaws restaurant? And that would be nice. It'd be interesting. Take some of the artifacts from the movies and autographs and pictures. But they just have laying around and just make it into a restaurant. Turn Jaws into a restaurant. If the uh, nostalgia land is not up to your cup of tea, we can do that. Because, of course, we're going to have, I mean, I'm looking at the map here, a new restaurant in Production Central would be nice. I'm not exactly sure what you'd theme it towards. Um, utilize the DreamWorks characters to the best of your abilities. That's why I said bring in the water coaster from Madagascar. I think it would fit in Production Central. Um, you'd have to find a sound stage to put it in. Or maybe bulldoze something down. But that's what you do with it. So uh, that's what I think about Universal. Um, it has a great, a great thing going, honestly. The studios itself... A great park. I mean, add a couple more rides to it, some more attractions, some more food options. And I know a lot of people treat it like we treat the studios here, and I don't because obviously I Hollywood Studios is my favorite park. Treat it as a half-day park. Universal Studios Florida does not have to be a half-day park. Because Cinematic Spectacular is amazing, everyone needs to see it. And I think the Transformers is going to bring in tremendous business. So there's going to be a lot of buzz coming to Universal in the near future. Well, that is what I'm going to do with that, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed our second episode of Plus and Minus. Next Saturday, we're going to go to a place that I don't know, I know pretty well, but a place I don't visit very often. Our Plus and Minus for next Saturday will be the Animal Kingdom. And until tomorrow, and that's all i got to say about that.